Did you ever think of yourself as an artist? Well, believe it or not, all of us can be textile artists, one step at a time. Please welcome Tammy Bowser, an international quilt winner, is here to share with us how to create art with fabric and using photos. Welcome back to Sewing with Nancy, Tammy. Nancy, it's really great to be back here at Sewing with Nancy. Often the first reaction to my stitched art is that that looks too difficult to make or I could never do that. What I'd like to show you is that starting with a great photo, choosing 9 to 12 fabrics, and then following my steps, you too can make fabric art projects that you'll be proud to show. How to Sew Art, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Since you're going to learn how to sew art, the best place to start is to appreciate this beautiful art. And Tammy, we have, we're going to show our viewers a gallery of some of your quilts. And the quilt behind us is a trombone player. Yes, this is, this is when I started doing this technique that I'm, you're going to learn today. This was mm -hmm. actually the very first one. I did. This is when I knew I had something special. You, you certainly do. And it looks difficult, but you'll see the process. And the fabrics that I have on the table are what are used. We'll give you details of how to work with this. But just so you get an appreciation of where this started, this is the fabric that Tammy started with to create this amazing photo. Yes, and we all, I always start with batik fabrics because they look painted to start with, so we don't have to do so much sure. work makes it look like a painting right away. Now we have Duke Ellington. Yes, that has only seven fabrics, believe it or not. And the, the photos were taken by your uncle. Absolutely, my uncle Jimmy, he was a photographer for Downbeat Magazine in the 50s and he took some amazing pictures. It's easy to do great work when you start with something great. We're gonna give you some hints a little bit later on how to choose photos, but first you need some more inspiration and Doris Day is your next inspiration. Yeah, that's another picture taken by my Uncle Jimmy. And that quilt was one Quilt National in 2007. And you may want to explain to our viewers Quilt National. Quilt National is one of the biggest art quilt competitions. And I didn't, I wasn't trying to win a competition. <laughs> I'm going to show you exactly what I did. And I just work until I, you know, I feel tickled by the work and uh -huh. that's what I entered. Now, the next image follows kind of the theme of music and jazz, and we have a bass player. Yeah, the bass player. Uh, what I love about it is that his face looks so joyful. That's why I called it joyful. And I, it just amazes me how much emotion you can capture. And I like the, the vertical, long look of this. Usually we do art quilts horizontally, but mm -hmm. kind of different. and. I think the peop our viewers are going to appreciate the stitching that's involved as well as the easy fusing techniques that you're going to share. Yeah, the techniques are amazing. They, the, the end results look, you know, very intimidating, but you'll see that it really is, and it's really simple. Now, changing from the musical theme to a, to a theme of the heart here are two granddaughters. Yes, yes, these, these are your girls. <laughs> they are my girls, yes. And yeah. what's lovely about this picture is that they are so happy in that picture, mm -hmm. and that comes out as sure. well as the joy, you know, the joyfulness in sure. the previous one. So now you've get, you have a taste of what you're going to learn, and it's going to be easier than you think, but you start with an image, first of all. And so this is the image we're going to work with today and during the next program as well. It's a two-part series. And give our viewers a little hint into this photo. Well, one of the great things about this picture, first of all, it's my granddaddy, and I love him so much. <laughs> so, but he was, um, uh, he, this picture has a light source coming from one side, so mm -hmm. it makes it nice and balanced. So you and can that's show a, the, where the light source is. Yeah, the light, the light is coming from this direction, and there's mm -hmm. nice shadows coming from sure. this side 
And, and that's a, a real clue on choosing a great picture. Now there's a lot of detail here. I there's mean, a lot of detail and a lot of background and, and, and doing it in fabric it gets a little complicated so I'm going to show you how to erase some of it and add a beautiful background without having to deal with all those little details. And here's an image how you cropped the photo. So mm -hmm. you cropped it and you took out the car, you just see more of a portrait of, mm -hmm. of your fa grandfather. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If you want to start, mm -hmm. I, I don't suggest you start doing the whole, a whole big picture. You can do that later like I did with the long one with the sure. bass player. But for, for what we're going to do today, I'm going to show you how to crop it down, zero in on the focal mm -hmm. point in the, and get rid of those extra details that aren't necessary and make it quick and easy. Now you saw the granddaughters, the artwork, and here's the photo we started with or Tammy started with. She didn't have to do any cropping, you can see, and it was focal point image. But not all images are perfect for this sewing art. You know, I, I showed you where the light source was coming on mm -hmm. my grandfather's picture. The problem with this one, it's a perfectly good picture, but yes. the light source isn't coming from one side and it's kind of shining on the blankets and leaving a shadow on the, the baby's baby. face. Yeah, so that you wouldn't have the detail. So this is just to, to kind of whet your appetite, to pique your interest of how to sew art. And now we'll show you how to take that picture and make a pattern out of it. Generally on Sewing with Nancy, we start with a sewing pattern or a quilting pattern. But in How to Sew Art, we're going to create our own pattern from the photo that Tammy has chosen. And you're going to do this with software. Yes, this is free software that you can download or free trial. And you can make patterns from your own pictures with it, just like I'm doing. So you can see howtosewart.com is where you can find this. And th this is how then you can get the pattern first. There's a lot of detail in this first program, getting ready. But then the second program, we'll do the sewing. OK, that's where the magic happens. <laughs> that's right. This is just the preparation. Mm -hmm. It's important, but it's easy. So you, you import your picture. It's just a JPEG image. Sure. You can get it from your digital camera. Mm -hmm. Or if you have an old picture like I had, you can scan it in and sure. import it right in, and it'll show up right here on the screen. The other, there's only a couple of, of, of little um, options here for you. And the, the first one is photo detail. And you put it on a, I put it on 71, and you give it a higher number like that because the more pixels it squeezes into the picture, the more clear your image is going to be. And you can see on the right side of the computer image that, that, that it's pixelated, little squares. Yes, yes. And then you, the next thing you do is choose how many fabrics. And I know it's counterintuitive, but you go and you choose less fabrics than you would think of. Right here, I have 10. But I want you to see what happens when I use even less. And what we're going to see is that the picture is really good, even with less. And you, you can still see the image of your grandfather. Your still eyes are sparkling. You know, smile yes. is great. And less fabrics to work with means it's easier. And we're going to show you how to choose these fabrics. Don't worry, we'll give you all those details. But first, we've got to get the pattern. Yes, so um, the, next, the next step is to this last, this last um, option mm -hmm. is to use the, the shape smoothing and that's because just because we have the pixels and just because we have a small number of fabrics sure. we need it to smooth them out the corners and merge them together and that's what this tool this does so you select a number and make sure this little box has used this feature selected and that's in the lower left hand corner yes right over here and then you just push process image and when you print the pattern out, they'll all be muse, uh, fused together. So it's, it's, that's the way the image is going to look. From, and the further you are the way from the designs, yes, yes. the more impressionistic they look and fun that they look out. And then you print out patterns. So the first print shows that you have six fabrics. We're going to be detailing how to choose those. And then there will be numerous sheets, which so I'll get to. And it's, we'll be tiling these together in just a few minutes with so all these little numbers. This is where I, when I did this, first of all, I was intimidated. But you can see after you put them together, it's kind of like paint by number. It is just like paint by number. And you can see here on the screen, there's a lot of, you know, you know, just background that just looks like noise. And we're going to get rid of that. And I'm going to show you how to do that sure. in just a minute, too. It's not necessary. And look at all those stripes. 
There's no need to do the stripes on the shirt. Yeah, we're not going to put those that <laughs> detail in. So this is how you create the pattern. You set your pixels at a, a pretty great number. And then you choose, oh, six to ten fabrics. Yes. And then contour, hit the third important area of contouring, and then you print out your pattern. So now we'll go to the table, show you how to put it together and create that pattern. We're pleased to show you the finished result of Granddaddy's photo, and you can see it behind us that Tammy has created, all with just six fabrics done. And it's created with the pattern we're about to share with you. But I wanted you to see what you saw on the computer and the finished result. And the pattern is tiled, like you do for many online patterns, but this is the pattern you make yourself. And you can see the upper left-hand corner, and there are little numbers that look like maybe little hash marks or polka dots. And you put this together, and as I bring it back down, we'll show you how you tile it together. And Tammy, this is what makes the pattern right. It's not necessarily giving step one, two, and three, but these color values. Yes, those color values, and that's what the numbers are. Yep. So here's the number six, and it relates to the number six. And then there's three and four and five, all on, on this little sheet. Yes. When you look at the pattern, you'll also notice that at the top it says rows and columns, and that's important because mm -hmm. it shows you exactly how to tape this pattern together. You'll take, um, you'll put them in order, then you cut the border, because there's extra paper around. Sure. You cut the border off, and then you'll match it right up. You'll see it matches right up, and then just, you just tape it together. Mm -hmm. I like to do the columns first, and then I have the next one here. I've already cut the borders off of this one so I can show it to you really quickly. So again, I'm just matching up that next, that, that third one in this column. That's really simple. And then makes it ready to go right on top of these other two columns that I've already put together for you. So that's really simple, right? It is. So then the pattern is ready. And you can kind of see the paint by number effect of the face image coming through. You can even kind of see the shapes. Sure, you certainly can. And what we're going to do next is create the fusible web that you have on your, on, to your right, Tammy, with parchment paper, fusible web to place over the pattern. Yeah, and the reason we're doing this is because we want something to hold all those pattern, all those pieces together we're going to make. And we have two layers of parchment paper sandwiched, sandwiching the fusible web. Yes. Not paperback fusible web, but just here we go. Here we got it. Here's the fusible web. Yes. And then the, more pa pa parchment paper. Yeah, and the parchment paper you can just find at the grocery store. It's easy to find. Mm -hmm. And then I just cut a piece of the fusible web to match it. And we're going to spray this with the basting spray that you have there, Nancy. And before you do, you just make sure it's the, the fusible web stays attached to the parchment paper. And I, you could just use... And this is virtual spraying. Shh. Yeah. You, you do it two or three times, you're like, you should do it outside. Yes, of course. You don't want to mm -hmm. make your whole house sticky. And then you, you, you do it kind of close. If you do it up too high, the wind will blow most of it away. So you get a nice <laughs> sticky coat. And then you re put the, the, the top sheet right on top, and that makes it ready to go. So our next step shows it already sprayed and adhered. And now we're going to look at some of the contour lines. Now, let's take a look at, at Granddaddy again, and from the photo, great photo from the 1970s. And you can see the shoulder, the collar, and all the stripes from the shirt are gone. Yes, they are, and we're going to get rid of that. One of the first things you do after you position that pattern underneath the fusible web, you see you can look for the edge. You know, the, the good thing about this one is that the background was fairly light, and his hair and his jacket was dark, so it makes it easy to see right where that line is. So I'm just sectioning it off, and I'm going to go up and section his hair off so I can see it. And then that makes this one whole piece of background, real big piece. So we're going to not pay attention to the d detail in the background. No, because we didn't want that detail mm -hmm. anyway. And I'm going to do the same thing for the collar. I could see the edge. And look at all those 
pieces that represent <laughs> stripes. They don't want to do a that. Lot of work. No, uh -uh. I don't want to do it. So again, I'm just drawing in those details. Now I have to admit, when I first worked with this software, I thought, oh my goodness, all those little pieces. But this makes life so much easier. Yes, this is one, two, three, four pieces now instead of because like in the shirt color, for example. It, it was there were a lot of number ones and stripes of number two, so we just got rid of that. Yes, and, and and here in the jacket, we have almost all number fives and got rid of the little sprinklings. Yeah, of, the little bits of. But when it comes to the face, that's another story. Yes, we keep that. Yeah, we keep that because I want to keep the sparkle in his eye. I don't want to. Yeah, right. Edit that out. So, so when we look at the finished artwork, and you look in the eye here, there are many more pieces in this section. Then there are, as we go to the side, and you'll see Tammy eliminated that portion. Yes, and another, another thing I want to pinpoint to simplify it even further, if, if you can look in really close, there might be a little piece that says number four and another little piece. Well, you can just merge those together, and that becomes one bigger piece. That kind of simplifies things a lot. And, because, you know, if it's not as important as the eyes, you can mm -hmm. simplify it and sure. just merge it together a little bit further. So instead of one, two, three, four, five little pieces, that's one piece here. And you can see on the quilt back here where you see there's big pieces where I did just that. Sure, we'll, we'll look back in here. And this was all kind of merged as one. So it's really an interesting process. It, and now we're not doing any sewing this time. We're just making the yeah. pattern. We're choosing the fabric next, and that yeah. If, you, if we prepare like we're preparing, then it makes the the, the the process for adding fabric and sewing a lot easier. When you start with fabric, you begin with an audition piece, one that has lots of color. Yes, this is my favorite because I pick something that just has lots of beautiful colors that make me feel excited. And that's what I start with. It gives me a color palette. It shows me what colors I should be use, I can use for the rest of the fabrics. And that's what I do. Another thing I do to put them in order from light to dark, that's mm -hmm. crucial because if they're not in order the correct way, then the picture won't show up. So I use my value isolation tool. And it has two little holes in it. And it, it, it makes it so I only focus in on one question. And that question is, is this one darker than this one. My intention is to go from light to dark this way. If the answer is yes, mm -hmm. then I continue on. Oh, uh-oh, do you think that yeah, one's No, we, we got to do some little switching here. Yeah, so then I'll, it only can go this direction, so I move it back this way. And so now the answer again is, I think I put it in the wrong place, but it's did. all right, but it's. I think we can go in you, one, you yeah. get the, I'm sure you're getting the, the, the yeah. idea though. So is this, Second one, the darker, sure. and then let's continue on. How about that uh, one? That's the greatest tool of finding value I've ever seen, or just way of doing it. Yeah, so it makes it real clear to see, easy to manage. So here are the fabrics that, were chose, that we chose, or Tammy chose, and then she put samples of these along. And you know, these same fabrics could be used for a variety of images. The granddaughters, my granddaughter's picture, which you'll see now, the finished one, had almost these same fabrics. So you don't yes. have to worry about color, you just have to worry about value. Yeah, some people think that just be, if you have a picture that's really light, you need to pick all light fabrics, no. but no, you don't. And you could go in a different color family totally. And here's our Tammy's image of Doris Day. And you can see it's in the blue families. Yes. Maybe a little bit more darker blue in some areas, yes. but it reads any way you want it to feel, but even though it's blue, it could be in the plums. Yes. It's, it's just f six to 12 fabrics will do the trick. So we have made a pattern. We have tiled it together from a picture, chosen the fabrics, and in next episode, we'll show you the magic, how to put all these components together to create art.
Today's Nancy's Corner guest is a storyteller who is drawn to small town life and has a penchant for quilting. When she combined those three interests, she became a New York Times best-selling author. I'd like you to welcome Marie Bostwick to Sewing with Nancy, a novelist and who's going to share with you some of her stories and how she began. Welcome, Marie. Thanks. I'm so glad to be here, Nancy. You've been on my radar screen for a long time to be included in this interview section because I always find it fascinating how writers begin their career, and especially when they incorporate my love of sewing and quilting. Yeah, Give yeah. our viewers a little preview. Well, I really, people often ask what came first, the sure. writing or the quilting. The writing came first. I was writing almost as soon as I could pick up a pen. Um, uh, you know, when I was a little girl, that was my idea of fun, was to hang out in the basement and write stories. Wow. <laughs> so I didn't really, though, know where it would take me. Um, and when I was, oh, you know, kind of a grown up in my 30s, I went on a vacation where there was a writer's workshop. And the teacher later pulled me aside and said, oh, well, you're a writer. What have you published? Which seemed <laughs> crazy to me because I just at that point was writing grocery lists in my mind. I had sure. little kids at home. Um, but he encouraged me and I did start writing seriously and really it took about 10 years before my first novel was published. Now you're on novel number 11. Yes ma'am. And so the second sister is what we're going to talk about today and how this story ties quilting into the mystery of it all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's Lucy and there's Alice, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Lucy is a kind of hard-bitten, ambitious, but loving political operative who has to go home during a t family tragedy. Um, and there she discovers something very secret in the old family home, a trunk full of quilts made by her sister Alice. And they are all have one inscription on the back, to Maeve. And they are made over 18 years, one quilt every year, but nobody knows exactly who Maeve is. Um, so during and this Alice, story- And Al Alice passed away. And Alice passes yes. away very sadly um, but during the story you know Lucy really finds out a lot about herself and what she wants out of life but she also rediscovers her sister in the town she grew up in and in this in this character made a quilt every year for 18 years mm -hmm. and that, her quilting kind of grew as her life changed. Yes, it's true. And you know, I think uh, those of us who've been quilting for a long time, I've been quilting for 25 years. Um, they're definitely better now than they were 25 <laughs> well, years ago. Well, I, I can attest to that, that as well. And you're also drawn to small towns. I am. You, you I, don't necessarily live in one. I actually do live in a very small Excuse town me. in Connecticut, um, but I travel a lot. Okay. So, uh, but I, it is, it is, uh, I love that, that a town is almost a character within itself. That's always the case in my books. So when you are writing, you know, I write a lot, but it's how-to sewing books. Um, I have definitely a plan, but when you're writing, how does the theme come to you? You know, I don't usually actually begin with a theme. Ah. Um, I just write the story, but it is interesting that when the book is done, Themes have emerged. I, I don't even know what they are, usually until about a month after I finished writing, but clearly there were things on my mind once the book is finished. And so you have you have a, characters you have thought of, and, mm -hmm. and then you kind of put in that small town flavor, yes. and you incorporate always a little quilting. Almost always, mm -hmm. um, but you know, the books really aren't about quilting. No, the they're books not. are right. about the relationships between right. the characters, and really probably half of my ra readers can't even thread a needle. And, and that's fine, but yep. I what I think is fascinating is that it brings quilting to people who are not oh, quilters. Oh, yes. So many people have written to me after they've read one of my books and said, I want to learn to quilt, and very often I will drop everything and find their <laughs> nearest quilt shop and tell them that they should call and say, I want to learn to quilt quilt and they will have nine new best friends. Oh, well, they, they certainly will. Isn't that something? It's so you true. You know, when we survey our readers, there are two common hobbies. Number one, flower gardening. Number two, reading. Yep, absolutely. So uh, this kind of combines, you know, a, a combination of things in, in The Second Sister. And you're working on a new book. I am, I am. I'm going back to Texas. I wrote a book called Between Heaven and Texas and I'm writing a sequel right now. I don't have a title for it, but it's a beloved character of mine, Mary Dell Templeton, who in fact happens to have a quilting television show. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> And, and uh, does she do interviews on the on um, television? She mostly does a lot of quilting. She has her son, her son Howard.
Ford helps pick the fabrics for her quilts because while Mary Dell is a wonderful quilter, she has no taste whatsoever. Well, so, I think she needs to use Tammy Bowser's value tool finder. What do you think? That, that we, would be a really yeah, good that, idea. That yes. We just showed how that worked. <laughs> well, it's interesting, Marie, how you've incorporated your love of writing, your love of small towns, and some of our hobbies and interests in that as well. So thank you for being our guest. Thanks so much for having me, Nancy. It's been fun. You're, it's, you're welcome. Well, and thank you for joining us during this first program of How to Sew Art. Tammy Bowser will be back next time for our second episode, and we will be working with the fabric and the pattern, and then all the magic happens. You can watch this program again at nancyzeman.com and learn more all about Sewing with Nancy. Bye for now. Tammy Bowser has written the book How to Sew Art, which is the reference for this two-part series. The book includes core concepts for making sewing art easy using the contoured pixel technique. Each book comes with a free online video course to guide you. It's $21.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com 2825. Order item BK2825. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.